Hey, welcome back to Vox Terra. Today's show, where's the outrage? Now, what I'm talking about is outrage about discrimination or prejudice or even attacks against Asian Americans. And I'm going to tie this back to the general interest of all people. But let me just start off with you where this came from. So one of the places this video came from was a buddy of mine posted on Facebook an article about an Asian American woman who owned a, a nail shop or something like that. She had a customer, a non-Asian customer, who didn't want to pay the bill. And the shop owner ran out in front of the car to stop the woman from running out without paying. Bad idea. And then got ran over, killed. And the jury apparently only gave her 10, or she only got a 10 year sentence for this. So uh, that buddy of mine, you know, called this post, where's the outrage? Let me share with you another article from Human Rights Watch. Anti-Asian violence in U.S. demands response, February 12th, 21. Now this 2021. Now this is coming from Human Rights Watch. And look, I'm, so the purpose of watching this video for you is going to be one: you're going to see how, regardless of, of whether you think you've got Asian ancestry or not, how how sticking up for people getting picked on is is good for you personally. You got a stake in that. I'm also going to give you some really good talking points that I've used successfully when I'm encountering prejudice in general and prejudice against eight people who are taken as being Asian in particular. So back to that Human Rights Watch article. Cities across the United States are seeing numerous unprovoked attacks against Asian Americans, particularly older people. On January 28th in San Francisco, 84-year-old was, was knocked to the ground and killed while walking in his neighborhood. There have been over 20 attacks in Oakland's Chinatown in the past two weeks that the local Chamber of Commerce considers to be targeted against Asians. Such attacks are not new. On Twitter, the hashtag Vincent Chen, Vincent Chin, sorry, Vincent Chin has surfaced, highlighting historical anti-Asian xenophobia and racism fueled by the U.S. auto industry decline in the 1980s. Now, let me, let me just go back to that Vincent Chin story. So that Vincent Chin story, in case you don't remember, it's going back to the 80s when before there was all the China bashing, there was a lot of Japan bashing. So Vincent Chin, this is, as I remember this story, was, was at a bar. He was getting harassed. Now, Vincent Chin was completely American. I don't think he was even Japanese. But in those days, all the, you know, Asia bashing was aimed at Japan, mostly. So he was getting harassed by a couple of guys at the bar. He stuck up for himself. They followed him outside, and they murdered him. And then they didn't get prison time. So where I always start my pushback against anti-Asian bias is I always start with, with one thing. I always start with the China bashing. China bashing. That's what's going on now. And I've pretty much grown up hearing China bashing. Just constantly we hear this drumbeat of China this, China that. And it never lets up. Very little good news about China ever comes out. So... I always point out to people that one, this constant drumbeat to China bashing, which goes way back in history, stirs up prejudice against people who look Asian. And I point out look Asian because none of us are really pure anything. You know, people have migrated all over this planet throughout history. And we're all really only a couple generations away from looking like one group or another group. Now, second, after I point out, hey, that China bashing you're doing when you're telling me this latest horrible thing about China, it not only do I tell them it's, it's, you're stirring up prejudice, but I also tell them that China bashing, China bashing, and this is where, this is, this is where it's, you know, being against prejudice comes, comes into play for everybody, right? Not just the group getting picked on, but for everybody. China bashing is used, in my opinion, as a distraction or a misdirect to prevent change at home. Now, that can be the case for any, you know, picking on any group of people, whoever they are, as a way to stop change from happening. But it is especially true in China bashing. You know me, my main focus is getting a greener economy, a less polluting economy. Well, I've heard at least I remember going back to the 90s, maybe as early as 1991, when I'd say, hey, we, we, should, we should be cutting back on all this fossil fuels we're burning, I'd hear, well, China and India, China and India, we got to compete with China and India, and they're making a lot of pollution. 1991, those two countries, China and India, were small players on, on, the, on the emission scene. They were not that heavily capitalist at that time, especially China, very agrarian still. So, so even then... They were used as an excuse, well, we got to compete with them, we can't take action here. Again, an excuse not to make change at home. 
How about COVID-19, right? That, that should have called into question this whole consumer capitalist system. We're all busy just running around buying and selling stuff we don't really need, and we're going to die for it, even spread a disease around for it. We're not going to pause the thing. So instead of questioning that, right, instead of questioning that, we, it's all the, well, what did China do? What did China do? Investigate China. It distracted from the whole big question that should have been asked. Now, I didn't invent this idea. I got that basic concept from a book called Labor's Untold Story, which is written by, by what was described as a leftist labor union, you know, who, who maybe had a lot of criticisms of capitalism. And that labor union, that Labor's Untold Story book, as I remember, pointed out, that to break the strikes, to break the union, the owners might bring in, you know, workers of a different racial group or ethnic group to try to pit them against each other and break that union. So another problem Asian Americans have in particular, people who look Asian, is that they're always viewed as foreign. They're always viewed as exotic and different, no matter how long they've been in the country, no matter how far back their ancestry goes in the U.S. of A. or Canada or whatever English-speaking country they're in. So my second pushback is I always explain, hey, you know, the Chinese were coming here, Chinese people were coming here to work on the railroad. They, they were coming here during the early days of American open immigration, as were Japanese. The Chinese were famous for coming to work on the railroads. The Japanese were famous for coming to settle farms and open stores and that kind of thing. But then a lot of, and then hostile, while a lot of people welcomed them, other people were, I don't know, jealous or something, and they, they passed a Chinese Exclusion Act and just froze them out. Now, a similar problem was happening for Irish and Italians. There was a political party called the Know Nothing Party, which, as I understand, actively assaulted people they believed to be Irish and American. But the Irish people were able to blend in easier and eventually be considered as real Americans. So what happened to the a Asian people, you know, they their chance to come here and, and just sort of blend in and assimilate was they were frozen, okay? They were frozen at a very low percentage of the population because they were shut out of those days of open immigration. So Asian people today make up, people with Asian ancestry today make up maybe 5% of the U.S. population according to the census. And that 5% has got to be divided between South Asian, which is like Indian or Pakistani, and East Asian, which would be like Chinese, Japanese, Korean. So with their numbers being frozen low, they don't have a lot of political muscle and it becomes an easy group to pick on. And a lot of people have a predatory aspect to them. Maybe we all do to some degree. So I the Bible, one of the, now I'm going to bring this back to the Bible a little bit here, which is something I like to do. In the Gospels, there's a saying, blessed are the meek. And as you do to the least among, among you, as you do to the least among you, so you do to me. So... You know, again, you notice that article from Human Rights Watch I, I cited at the beginning, it's elderly people being assaulted. So you've got a group who's heavily outnumbered, who look like they don't have a lot of backup, easy to pick on, and it's probably anybody who looks Asian can tell you who went through the American schools, they get picked on. And picking on them is dismissed, not as real prejudice. You think about, you think about Comedy Central. If you ever watched Comedy Central? There was this guy, this comedian, so-called comedian Taj O. Oh. He had a show called The Amazing Asian where he kind of mocked somebody, some Asian YouTube video or something like that. Well, if he had an amazing some other group, would, would Taj O, would that, would that have been okay? But it's okay to do Amazing Asian. You get what I'm saying? So there, the, a, a, people with Asian ancestry are so outnumbered that people don't even think of picking on them as actually racism. So I hope you found these arguments I'm giving you for pushback helpful. And, hope you're, and if you have no Asian ancestry, if you believe you don't have any Asian ancestry, I hope you found it helpful just from the fact that singling out a group of people is used as a way to distract from change at home from us all benefiting. And until next time, please remember to subscribe to my channel, click that notification bell, like, comment, support a Patreon, and peace be with you.